Towards the end of May 1940, the Allies found themselves nearly trapped in the Low Countries. The Germans executed a swift advance, which inadvertently left their flanks vulnerable to a counterattack. Seizing the opportunity, the British promptly launched an offensive with 86 tanks. The mighty advance was split into two columns, positioned approximately five kilometers apart, while an additional 60 French tanks bolstered the main force. On the opposite side was General Erwin Rommel and his exceptional 7th Panzer Division. The Allied attack was successful at first. Numerous Germans were taken prisoner, and the British tanks demonstrated immunity to their 3.7cm PAK guns. Overcome with panic, the Germans realized their weapons were ineffective against the enemy armor, prompting General Rommel to muster all available artillery, including a potent weapon, the 8.8cm flak. The combined firepower ultimately halted the British advance and forced them to retreat. But notably, the most lethal German weapon of World War II was not originally intended to be an anti-tank gun at all. Enemy above. Aircraft began to see military use even before World War I. While limited and rudimentary, early aircraft types served in reconnaissance and bomber roles. As the war erupted, aircraft development accelerated with the introduction of new technologies. Innovative designs were created for bombing enemy positions, initially using small hand-tossed bombs, and then more specialized types emerged, capable of carrying larger payloads affixed to their airframes. Despite their moderate effectiveness, aircraft posed a significant threat to military and industrial targets, necessitating the development of ground-based anti-aircraft defenses. Moreover, initial protective measures were simplistic, using conventional artillery guns mounted to enable skyward aiming, which proved crude and ineffective. The chances of bringing down a hostile aircraft were slim, and while being engaged with the Allies on the Western Front, the Germans learned the need for more purpose-built weapons. In 1916, the first trucks armed with 8.8cm anti-aircraft guns appeared on the front lines, laying the groundwork for more advanced gunnery. Respectable firms like Krupp and Erhardt, which would later become Rheinmetall, then developed their own versions. And although both models experienced moderate success and saw extensive action in the war's later stages, neither had a significant impact on the development of the legendary 8.8cm Flak, a weapon that would ultimately carve out a name for itself. The Trojan Horse. After Germany's defeat in World War I, the nation was prohibited from developing military technologies, including anti-aircraft guns. Consequently, many domestic companies collaborated with European arms manufacturers. One such case was Krupp, which partnered with the Swedish Bofors armaments manufacturer in the 1920s and eventually owned a third of its shares. Towards the end of the decade, Krupp learned that the German army sought a new anti-aircraft gun, one that would deceive France and Britain into believing it was an outdated design, even though it was far from it. The new gun was expected to fire a 10-kilogram round at a muzzle velocity of 900 meters per second. Besides that, the mount had to enable a full 360-degree traverse and an elevation range of minus 3 to 85 degrees. Both the gun and the mount were to be placed on a cross-shaped base with four outriggers. In later years, the specifications would include a firing rate of 15 to 20 rounds a minute and the use of high explosive rounds with a 30 second fuse. As for the desired caliber, 75 millimeters were deemed insufficient. Therefore, the 8.8 centimeter caliber, which had already been tested during the war, appeared more suitable for a heavy gun. Furthermore, 8.8 centimeters was established as the minimum caliber, with larger ones permitted as long as the weight did not exceed nine tons. The towing trailer also needed to reach speeds of up to 40 kilometers per hour when towed by a half truck or larger truck. Additionally, the speed of redeployment was deemed crucial. Equals. Recognizing that the development of such a weapon could take years, army officials acknowledged the urgent need for temporary solutions. Consequently, in 1931, Krupp engineers began constructing the gun in complete secrecy. By the fall of 1932, they had delivered two guns and ten trailers. Soon after, the guns proved highly satisfactory and were officially adopted for service as the 8.8cm Flugabwehrkanone 18, or anti-aircraft gun. 
They were poised to participate in Germany's rearmament when Adolf Hitler rose to power. However, contrary to popular belief, the primary role of the 8.8cm flak was in static defense rather than offensive deployment. As tensions on the continent escalated, the new anti-aircraft gun underwent several modifications, including an improved platform and base for enhanced stability. Interestingly, the Germans also introduced a new three-part barrel to accommodate the high rate of fire and an armored shield to protect the gunners. The updated Flak 36 model was adopted a few months before the outbreak of World War II, followed by the Flak 37, which featured advanced instrumentation. Nevertheless, the German military remained unsatisfied with the performance of existing weapons and sought improvements. In response, Rheinmetall developed a new 8.8cm design with a longer cartridge and barrel, boasting a speed of 1,000 meters per second, an effective ceiling of 11,300 meters, and a range of 14,700 meters. General de Flak Artillerie Otto Wilhelm von Rentz described the formidable Flak 41 as being, quote, almost equal to the 128 millimeter. Debut. In 1936, a civil war erupted in Spain. The leader of the nationalists, Francisco Franco, was viewed as a potential ally by fascist Germany. Consequently, when he appealed to Adolf Hitler asking for military aid, the Fuhrer was eager to help the Spaniard. At the time, all rebel forces were stationed in Africa, and to Franco's detriment, the Republicans controlled the Spanish Navy. This meant he could not safely redeploy the troops to Spain. Forced to seek foreign aid, Franco turned to Germany for equipment. That summer, six HE-51 and 20 Ju-57 aircraft secretly arrived in Spain. This modest fleet would serve as the foundation for the so-called German Condor Legion's Air Force in Spain during the war. In addition, the German ground troops operating in Spain were supplied with several 8.8cm flax to arm the F-88 anti-aircraft battalion which consisted of two heavy and two light batteries. As fate would have it, from May 11, 1937 onwards, the originally anti-aircraft gun discovered another role for which it would become more renowned. On that day, the flak was deployed against two enemy T-26 tanks near Toledo with strikingly auspicious results. Following the first ever recorded success of the 8.8cm gun against enemy armor, the flak guns were, ironically, extensively utilized for engaging ground targets. After the Spanish conflict, the Flak's performance was deemed highly satisfactory, having excelled in ground operations, a completely different role than initially envisioned. With its tremendous firepower and range, some German officers advocated for its use as an anti-tank weapon, most notably General Ludwig Ritter von Einmansberger. Big Guns The first theoretical combat use of the 8.8cm flak by the Germans was during the occupation of the Sudetenland. However, the operation was peaceful, and thus the guns were never fired. During the Polish campaign, the flak saw minimal use, as the Polish Air Force was quickly defeated and Polish armor was virtually non-existent. By the time World War II erupted, the Germans possessed approximately 3,000 flak 18s. Drawing on their combat experience, Hitler ordered the Flak 18 to be adapted for engaging ground targets, which led to the addition of a sight for direct firing. However, the platform had a significant weakness, its limited mobility. As such, two modifications were made. First, a small batch of ten guns was placed on a half-track chassis. Second, the Bunkernaka, or Bunker Destroyer, was developed as a towed version using an armored vehicle. Both models had an optimized elevation of minus four to fifteen degrees which precluded them from anti-aircraft roles. Nevertheless, when the Western Allies entered the war on May 10, 1940, the Germans were equipped with a formidable gun, capable of piercing even the 60mm thick armor of the French Char B1 tank. Only a week into the fighting, a battery from the 38th Flak Regiment held their defensive position near Montcornet and decimated several French tanks. Reportedly, the Flak pierced an 18-ton tank frontally and destroyed another two 32-ton tanks and a fourth vehicle was abandoned by its crew after witnessing the destruction of their companions. Remarkably, these hits were achieved from a range of over 2.5 kilometers. Mind the Gap Arguably, it was the African theater with the 8.8-centimeter flak truly shown. Initially, the Germans were not interested in the area, 
but they had to assist their Italian allies when they failed to conquer Egypt in 1940. That February, the Deutsches Afrika Corps under General Erwin Rommel arrived on the continent. The main firepower was provided by the Panzer III, armed with short 5cm guns and several Panzer IVs, supported by a contingent of the Flak Regiment. However, despite their towed anti-tank guns, the Germans were relatively vulnerable to enemy armor. As such, the Flak 8.8 .8 was deployed as a mobile force to enhance their firepower. And what's more, due to the Luftwaffe's temporary air supremacy at the time, the guns could be allocated for various roles. For instance, during Operation Battleaxe in June of 1941, the German Flax eliminated no fewer than 90 British tanks. Five months later, the Flak 8.8 .8 destroyed 10 Mark IV cruiser tanks in just two days, clearing the path for a German advance to El Adem. However, as the Panzer units repelled the enemy and the Germans and Italians went on the offensive, the Flak battery was left behind and became vulnerable to British attacks. Even so, the 8.8cm .8 guns provided the firepower necessary to protect a gap between the German and Italian units, costing the British five tanks, 20 trucks, and several artillery batteries. In return, the Germans lost only two soldiers, and another two were wounded within an entire month. Ultimately, 19,650 examples were built during the conflict, and the widely used flak became one of the most iconic weapons of the war, even though it was not originally designed as an anti-tank gun. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to Dark Docs, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Also, don't hesitate to explore the rest of our Dark Documentaries channels for more captivating stories of modern warfare and military developments. We publish regularly, so stay tuned.